Let's actually start the recording so that we can have that. That's a good idea. It's okay, guys. Guys in the recording, you didn't miss Jack. But Slardar is going to be the pick here for Skyville. I am not a huge fan of this hero. I have never really have been. I feel like he's just way too hit or miss. Like, if you get shut down your Blink Dagger, if you get it super late, you're not a useful hero. It's really, really a slow game from there on out. Ten seconds remaining. But either way, it is a hero that you can build around. Letting, getting Eventual Spirit second or something like that, you could find yourself with a little bit of minus armor. Your pickoff power is going to be really, really high Reserve if you're Skyville, if you're able to protect this Slaughter enough so that he can get his Blink Dagger's worth of farm. And the offlane selection, when Beast Master's out, Earth Spirit's out, there are still offlaners for sure, but you know, Slaughter is an okay one to have on your side. And for the Wii Play side, grabbing Eventual Spirit up against the Slaughter already looking pretty appealing. Rizal Disruptor is a super early pick from Skyville, and up against the Slaughter, that's not too terrible either, though Darks here is going to be not bad. Not really sure if he's going to match up versus that Slaughter, but uh, they get Vengeful Spirit and Darks here. That's a little bit interesting. So yeah, Darks here just in the lane is going to be super, super solid. Uh, I was going to say, you know, if you're going to get a Darks here, get a Disruptor with him, try to get some synergies there. Vengeful Spirit's power level is still high enough so that it's worth picking her up in any given situation. But uh, no huge synergies between Vengeful Spirit and Dark Seer. Surge, Magic Missile, it's fine, whatever. Ma uh, Ion Shell, Vengeful Spirit is not really a threat. Ten They're both individually decent versus Slaughter, but in different ways. So yeah, I think this pick is a little bit more so a ban up against Skyville's side. On the Dire side, with Slaughter already, you don't really want to give them too much of an advantage in that Roche pit. Although it's still, at this point, it would be a cakewalk for Skyville to walk into Roche, grab it. And they're going to grab a Disruptor anyway. Which I'm sure would have been banned out if it wasn't picked now by Skyville. But so they have Disruptor, they have the Slaughter. Again, pick off potential through the roof. And this time it's just a very simple Disruptor. What the hell? Disruptor counter pick versus the Darks here. Um, sure. I get sometimes. Sometimes you just gotta ban Meepo. You know what I'm. You know what I mean? They have like already two okay heroes versus Meepo. So, I'm not really sure what that's all about. Five they definitely know something that I don't. I've only cast We Play once before. I'm assuming these teams Reserve have played time. against each other in the past. So, there just may be that. But, uh, sure, ban out Meepo. Ban out the Meepo and Alchemist. Are there any heroes that Meepo and Alchemist just absolutely crush? I can't think of any. I really can't. I mean, Meepo, I guess, is okay versus Darkseer. Kind of. You can cancel his surge with nets, but then again, it's like Iron Shell is pretty good against Meepo also, and surge is good against Earth uh, uh, Geo Strike. So I'm not really sure what's going on with Skyville's bans right now. Seems like they're uh, just okay doing their own thing and banning at random. Does what's going to be next? Let's say a uh, random kind of bad hero here, uh, Tree and Protector ban. Got to get rid of that guy. Yeah, Tree and Protector has its uses. I can actually... Mm, I can't really see them going for Tree and... But... Remaining. Fine. In this context, he's not good, guys. Five not yet, at least. Remaining. Really need a reason to pick that hero up. There we go. There's a van I can get behind Radiant TA. They, they played it themselves pretty well in the last game. Although, again, it was a pretty free game. Uh, TA had a... A matchup that usually doesn't go as well for the TA, but just happened to go really well for her. And Invoker somehow is still in the pool. Uh, again, we play still have enough power to go for that. Getting a Wex build Invoker up against Disruptor Slaughter is actually super strong. You'll have movement speed everywhere, man. With Surge and Wex, go everywhere at max MS. Feels good. Oh, they're going to ban it out, actually. So, well, mid lane still is free. And Gyrocopter is probably not going to go towards mid, though we have seen teams in the past do that. Grab a couple points in Missile, and then you, know, you transition into a pretty decent Gyrocopter game from there. But you could always go for something like Alina, like a Viper, Razor type of hero. I don't really see either of these two sides really gearing up for a super aggressive push. I guess it is possible to see the Wii Play side grab Shadow Shaman or grab Chen as their fourth pick, then try to transition to a little bit of push. Uh, if you really want to do that, then Shadow Fiend should be high on the list of priorities. Maybe a little bit stronger here for Skyville. Although Radiant Shadow Fiend is definitely still a thing, uh, Dire Side with Slardar killing Roche is going to be even easier. 
Yeah, I feel like Shadow Fiend is probably the pushing hero that these teams would want if they want to go for pushing. And of course you can always go like DK or something. That's not bad either. In fact, that's decent here for both sides. Uh, no huge, great anti-DK hero. And Slaughter Amplify Damage is certainly very good up against DK. It's nice to have, but it's not going to prevent you from picking that hero if you're, if you're weak play. Earth. Hmm, Shaker. Radiant team pick. Not really sure about this pick. The hero is, is perfectly reasonable. He is decent up against the Surge, and if you're expecting a very mobile-heavy lineup, uh, yeah, he's, he's great to have. The Wombo combo is definitely going to be there from Skyville. My concern is that their supports may not be able to do enough. But there will be situations where they will have the Fissure layered up with the Disruptor Field, and Slaughter is going to be able to beat down, in which case... Uh, if you're going up against someone like a Dark Seer, you may get that kill, you may not. The supports are soft enough Bane, Ventral Spirit, that you should be able to get those kills with these low damage supports and Shaker Disruptor, but what they have in, you know, stun duration and utility, they really lack in damage in exchange. And Slaughter isn't really going to be a huge damage hero, not until super late in the game. He just doesn't do that much damage. So Skyville's supports, at least when you look at those supports compared to we play supports with the Bane, Venge, they really don't have that much uh, damage in comparison. Like, Bane Venge can walk around getting kills on anyone. Especially with the Gyrocopter and Ion Shell there. There's really not much that Sky will have in order to contest that offensively. And defensively, they will have Fissure and whatnot, and they have good tools to stop a Bane Vengeful Spirit from playing their game. I think it really does come down to we play having to not go super aggressive. If they do go super aggressive, like we saw in the last game, too aggressive too often then that would be, you know, again, an, an issue of gameplay style, in which case, I guess their captain has to be like, guys, cool it, stop playing like that. But Skyville are going to grab a Shadow Fiend in the end, making the, the Earthshaker and Disruptor pick a lot better, for sure. Remaining. Shadow Fiend just is a hero that just wants to have a lot of barriers between him and his enemies. Of course, you know, the melee range Requiem is always the dream, but for the most part, you're okay sitting on the offsets, throwing raises and right clicks. So protect the Shadow Fiend, is that going to be the game plan here from Skyville? Still looking for a safe lane hero, and I, I feel like with all these barriers that they have, with the wall and the field, seconds, and I guess to a lesser extent the Slaughter, oh. then they'll probably want to have a ranged core here. Someone very similar to Shadow Fiend to just sit back and right-click uh, right click into those walls. And the dire, the Radiant side we play don't really have any great heroes at bypassing Radiant that. Like, Gyrocopter's not going to get a blink, probably. <laughs> Uh, Bane, Ventral Spirit. I guess they have Swap, which is okay. But usually as a support Ventral Spirit, you're not going to want to swap super offensively. Unless you're ahead and have like an Aether Lens, you can do that. When you're kind of behind or where you should be as a support, then swapping offensively is just not going to be something that you'll have many chances to do. Wind Ranger, at yeah, Wind Ranger is a hero that can get to the back lines, get to those Fire soft heroes in the back, i.e. Shadow Fiend, kill him off in an instant. It's an okay matchup versus the SF as well, but this is also a hero that is... Very susceptible to this control style of Skyville. You try to win run away, suddenly Fissure, suddenly can I field and glimpse. And Wind Ranger's not really going to have that great a time. Skyville going to grab an Anti Mage, actually. Not going to be that range hero. But, you know, you do have still Anti Mage going up against, I assume, a Darkseer lane. And that lane is good enough for Anti Mage, especially once he gets like level 3, that he can just be left alone. He's one of the better heroes, actually, at handling Ion Shells. You can also just blink straight onto the Darkseer and start trading hits. And with Mana Burn, you're just not going to lose those trades ever. So yeah, I'm, I'm liking the Anti-Mage here. There is a decent amount of control on the We Play side. Shackles, Nightmare, Grip, Vengeful Spirit. So Anti-Mage is not going to have a completely free ride. But I think the matchup up against Darkseer and the fact that Skyville's other four heroes should be able to buy so much space for the AM makes it in the end worth it for the Anti-Mage to uh, you know, see the light of day here. Here we go. We're going to start this game off with another DC, because that's how this game is played. And apparently Jed is really going to enjoy that. I'll open up this so you guys see the smack talk that's going on right now. I don't speak that, so I don't really know what they're saying, but uh, I'm sure you guys do. But either way, on the Wii Play side, we got Armel. It's time to be playing the Wind Ranger. Kurito's on the support. Bane got cool devices again, playing the Ventral Spirit. Jed is on the Gyrocopter, who's really enjoying himself. Torres is playing the Darkseer. Boss Tim's the Spectre Picker. Well, not this time. He's going to be playing the Blind Antimage. 
Earthshaker is here also with a really long name. Kevs is on the Shadow Fiend. Got Grimto on the Disruptor, and Van is on the Slardar. I was just joking about the Smack Talk, but it seems like we might actually be having some Smack Talk here. Again, I don't speak this, so I can't really say for sure, but no, either way, uh, you have an Antimage on the field. And, of course, the big question with that is, does the... Does the side that is going up against Antimage have suitable heroes to pressure the AM? Uh, it's not going to be the worst in the world. Like, they have, of course, very aggressive, uh, potentially aggressive roamers in the Vengeful Spirit and the Bane. They have heroes like the Wind Ranger and the Gyrocopter, cores who can do a monstrous amount of damage late game, but also if they have a good early start, can just, you know, ball up and take towers like nobody's business. In lane, they're not going to have a great response to Tim's. Like, the Antimage should be able to free farm the lane until like I want to say like minute 10 minute 12 that's when things are going to get a little bit more dangerous for the anti-mage there's no real great way to shut down the anti-mage in lane but outside of that being able to pressure the anti-mage's space take towers force force issues uh, we play definitely have heroes that are good enough at that so we'll see if they're actually able to get enough farm and they should be for the most part like slaughter on the off lane isn't really a threat to anyone, especially a gyrocopter lane, so Slaughter for the most part is just going to be poked out by the Venge or the Bane or probably both. Slaughter can't really do too much there. Mid lane matchup you would expect to be fairly even. Shadowfiend going up against this Wind Ranger, both of whom have Fairy Fire, even ish stats, but Armel just has more base damage naturally. So unless something really ha weird happens. Oh, that's not good. It's not that bad, actually. Like, you should have it again by the time you need it. But holy crap, we play. Get your internet shit together. Seriously, guys. But yeah, the, the mid lane matchup should be fine. The Darkseer, although he does have a matchup that is probably one of the worst matchups for Darkseer, should still be good enough. Like, having this camp available, unless it gets blocked, which doesn't look like it's going to be the case. No one's really heading in that direction. Uh, he should be able to at least stack it up, iron shell it down. Get some sort of farm. And Slaughter doesn't really have that luxury. <laughs> Stack up to Crush Farm. Next level farming strats from Van. It'll take like 10 years to clear that camp, but I guess it's not impossible. It's just very improbable. Still stacking for Skyville. Should be at a premium. I don't know if they can save those stacks long enough for Tim's to grab a Battle Fury and clear it, but at the very least, you're going to need your Shadow Fiend to get a little bit of acceleration. Because again, he's going to have, a, for the most part, even matchup versus the Wind Ranger. So having stacks, he's going to put him at a significant advantage. He's going to take two raises, Armel. He's going to stand and trade hits with Kevs. Not doing a terrible job either. Now with Windrun active, Wind Ranger is no joke in the right-click department. Oh, she forces out the Fairy Fire already. I mean, it is not really the biggest deal in the world, but this is now damage that Shadow Fiend is never going to see again. Van towards bottom lane, going to take a full Rocket Barrage while sprinting. Level 1 Rocket Barrage, <laughs> that's a lot of damage. Yeah, but Wind Ranger... Getting a pretty decent trade. This is something you don't really want to be doing as Shadow Fiend. Trading hits. Pretty much ever. So, yeah. Getting into that duel right there. Even though you land two raises. It's only 100 damage a pop. So, like, 75 damage a pop. Earthshaker can't really do too much to help. Now, Armel. Can you fissured again? But they already forced out. And now a salve on the Shadow Fiend. Okay, I didn't expect this matchup to go this well for the Wind Ranger. Especially since it's not just a Shadow Fiend here. It's Shadow Fiend plus Shaker. And Kevs is getting into duels that he really should be trying to avoid, like the plague. At least, like, get more souls first, man. Get some base damage so you can actually stand a chance. But your damage in comparison to the Wind Ranger is so, so low. Another fish is going to be thrown up by the Shaker. He had loaded out with four clarities. Glimpse back into Torres. He's going to be perfectly okay with that. The Fissure is, I think, crumbling right now. Oh my god, we play. We play, please. What are you doing to me? Yeah, but the Shaker roaming around. You would be able to kill the Wind Ranger to a certain degree, but that doesn't happen until later, to like level 4, level 5 on the Shadow Fiend. You could just Fissure, double raise, and get the kill almost instantaneously. Having boots on all these clarities, I feel like this build is just not going to work out for Nanatsu. Like, he's already chugged down one clarity. He's gotten pretty much nothing done with his Fissure so far. There's not much you can do versus the Dark Seer, unless like anti-mage <laughs> suddenly has level five he has spell shield and blink i mean these are all good things to have but no mana break just yet so he's not a threat to the dark seer necessarily dark seer doesn't even have a surge but he's not really scared he shouldn't be scared of this whereas the slaughter has been like panicking the entire time he knows that if he gets hit with like a magic missile or a nightmare or anything then he might just be dead 
maybe not this close to his tower, but Van's having a slightly better experience time than Torres. But overall, this laning stage going really well for Weplay. And the Shadow Fiend really needs to get some CS. Losing that Fairy Fire early on really does hurt. Shadow Fiend is probably the best hero to have Fairy Fire on. Needs that extra damage. It's essentially another soul's worth of damage. Armel is going to get into another dual fissure. He's going to come in from the back this time. Windrun is active, however. Armel needs a couple more right clicks to kill Kevs. He's not going to get it, though. 6 HP. The Shadow Fiend survived. Now Windranger is one punch away from death, and Shaker is going to grab it. Boots first, Shaker apparently doing the deal. Two minutes in, they draw first blood on the Windranger. That was maybe a little bit of luck on the Shadow Fiend's part, getting hit with like good high low rolls from the Windranger. But either way, Windranger is still doing quite a bit of damage. Had Fairy Fire to eat. Uh, man, Fairy Fire is pretty good. Grimto's gonna take a lot of damage from Torres up towards top lane. Fissure's gonna get in his way, however. Now completely out of mana. Tim should be able to draw this kill. Uh, Darkseer trying for the neutrals tonight. I think that's the best he can hope for right now. Knolls! Knolls! They're not Knolls, they're Vools. And Antimage is gonna grab that kill in the end. It's the last hit with that mana break. So another kill here for Skyville. They see Kurito. They don't have enough mana, unfortunately, so that's not gonna happen. Uh, not in range for the glimpse. Get out of my way. I'm trying to click on Disruptor. There we go. Yeah, not in ra enough range. Only level 2. But Kurito has arrived in this top lane. Of course, going to alleviate a lot of pressure that should have been applied to Van. Holy shit. This is like the most pauses I've seen in the game ever. It's okay, Tims. I forgive you. But yeah, that was... I mean... That was unfortunate for the Wind Ranger. But at the same time, if you have, fi if you have a Fairy Fire there, y you... Are going up against a Shaker, who does have more base movement speed than you do, because he had boots and the Wind Ranger still does not. Maybe it wouldn't have saved her anyway, but uh, I, don't know, I feel like you kind of have to go for it. You kind of just eat your fairy fire. You don't really need that much damage as the Wind Ranger. Should have boots coming out. That's oh, a bottle actually. No boots just yet. Yeah, so I guess the boots disadvantage means that she would have died anyway. But by the way, Shaker grabbing first blood. That's his arc boots. Still has another clarity. He's going to be throwing out Fissures like nobody's business. In fact, he has another ankle right now. Fissure, not a block, but still decent. Credo's going to arrive. Nightmare? Uh, sure. Nightmare into right clicks. That'll show him. Armel can't even get close enough, but still has a lot of damage. I mean, Bane is no joke here. He does have to watch out a little bit. If he gets Fissure walled, a couple raises. Well, there are not many raises available, still Credo's going to take one. He gets a Brain Sap off. Power Shot through. Going to snipe the Shaker. Credo now trying to juke up on the high ground. Go into the trees, stay in the trees. Shackle shot, the angle's there. Kev's gonna get right click down. Power shot through, is gonna fully connect, and Kev's is gonna fall. Melee raise, nightmare is there. Armel gonna get saved actually, but he's gonna walk right into Thunderstrike or right clicks or both. There it is. Grimtail gonna grab that kill. Kurito now is on the run. However, he does have Torres right behind him. Bane's trying to keep Grimto here. Gonna wall it off. Here comes the Ion Shell. The race is on. Kurito should survive, and he will. The backup, however, is coming. Fissure will not connect on Kurito. He's still alive somehow. Bane is on the hunt, however. He has invis, and Kurito may not know this. Oh, Bane. No, don't do it, Bane. Oh, he walked right into the invis slaughter. Feels bad, man. Van did take a large excursion out from this bottom lane, though, to grab that kill. So there is, I guess, that bright spot there for the Radiant. But still, they're able to... Oh, Armel getting fissured again by Nanatsu. He does have Wind Run, but it's going to time out. No boots. Oh, there is boots on the Wind Ranger this time. And he lands a nice shackle. So he will be fine. Still a great trade overall for the Radiant side, I guess. But, uh, yeah, it, it's still a messy game from both sides, honestly. Like, Van getting that kill, obviously a little bit closer towards his blink. Is this his... Yes, that's his Tranquils. And still this mid lane, just an absolute mess. Shaker's been doing some serious work, though. He has died once, but uh, overall, that's decent. I mean, he has the arcane boots already. He's not getting a ton of experience, but and he's getting enough to be comfortable in this uh, in this game. Dark surviving, grabbing level four off of that. Oh, fissure! Mm, they're not even gonna cast it. They caught him in the field, but what the hell was that power shot? That was nowhere close. Now Armel's gonna get fissured. Why is he not casting Fissure? He's still not casting Fissure! And he misses in the end! Razes should still get this kill, I want to say. Armel's looking for a Shackle angle. He's trying to raise Kev's. Eat the Fairy Fire. Not going to get it, though. Oh, man. Shadow Fiend again barely surviving. And now they're going to try to go for Kurito? They have another Fissure in two seconds. Though, they don't really want to get too close to the Shadow Fiend. He has Stick Charges. Two Razes need to land. One misses. Second misses. Brain Sap! And Kurito's going to snipe the kill! What's going on in this game? Alright. Uh, so, for the Earthshaker, just...
commit to a Fisher, bro. Just, just, just throw it out, man. Just throw it out. Uh, I guess the Wind Ranger made the best out of that situation. Was again kind of unlucky, honestly. But uh, hey, you you win run, you focus fire, you try to man up. I can at least respect that from Armel. Uh, that play from the Shadow Fiend getting brain sapped was a little bit weird, also. But we're gonna pretend that didn't happen. Shadow Fiend is playing perfectly, no mistakes here. He's gonna lose quite a few souls off of that, and Bane, of course, is gonna get a very similar advantage to the Earthshaker grabbing first blood. Armel once again gonna get into a duel. There are no shackle angles here, but Shadow Fiend still is gonna take a lot of damage. Speaking of damage, Van almost dying down towards bottom. Magic Missile into call down, not quite enough to kill off the slaughter. Yet still drives him off the lane for a little while longer. Tower still taking quite a few hits. Are they gonna go for Armel again? Just gonna keep him selected there. Wind Ranger may get fissured and raised, but I don't see her dying again just to those two in the mid lane. Unless the fissure block is absolutely perfect, which it may just be here. Kevs does not want to get too close. Power shot, level three. And with sticks being consumed, Shadow Fiend won't die to that. But still getting randomly power shot through. Man, Armel is just uh, you know, firing some pretty good power shots. Still 1, 3, and 2. Not the best score in the world. Still looking for this bottom lane, though. Cool devices. Doesn't have waved yet. Now he does. And well, it looks like they'll drive the slaughter away. Again, tower is going to take a lot of damage. And it should be that bottom tier 1 soon to fall. A lot of extra gold here. Maybe a little bit closer to that mechanism. Move Tim's. They get no oh, actually bottom lane is where the action is gonna happen. Van able to punish that Vengeful Spirit side. Now the tower was destroyed, so losing the Vengeful Spirit for that, not a big deal, unless they also lose Jed, who's gonna choose the wrong direction to retreat, because he's walking right into an Earthshaker, walled off now completely. You gotta fight the slaughter. Crush after having amplified down. Jed's gonna get beaten down for a kill. So taking the tower for a Vengeful Spirit, that's worth it for we play. Losing your gyrocopter on top of that, not as much so. The Skyville are gonna grab a handful of kills across the map. Yes, lose their tower, which kind of sucks. But overall, everyone who needs to survive is surviving, ma namely Tim's. Yeah, there's not much that Bane, Gyro that, uh, Bane Darkster can do to kill off an Anti-Mage. Especially an Anti-Mage with level 3 blink. It's damn near impossible to do that. Radiance. Krito is going to get stunned up after the Nightmare. Fissure onto 2. Shackle Angles, not really here just yet. Short Vacuum back, looking for a Magic Missile. Not quite there either. Shackle, not going to latch either, but it will slow him down long enough to land a Missile. With the right clicks, they'll grab the kill on the Shaker. Is it really time for Weplay to group up and push, though? They're nowhere close to a mechanism on Darkseer. They do have Call Down, and they... Well, they don't actually have Focus Fire, actually, so no, you, you don't push this. In fact, I'm, I'm inclined to say that you just stay on the bottom lane as the Gyrocopter. Oh, they're going to get into another fight over in mid. Armel going to get glimpsed in. Still with Ion Shells doing some nice damage here. Krito is going to arrive with a glimpse. They lose the Wind Ranger, however. They'll gain Kevs in exchange. A decent trade, one for one so far. Here comes the Call Down. Going to wake up Grimto. Brain Sap, second... Oh, missile, no, magic missile, no, also not gonna happen. Fields goes up. Nas is in the front lines, though. He's gonna take the magic missile instead. And the fly cannon grabs the kill on the disruptor. Oh, poor disruptor. A little bit too close to that for it, and it's gonna be Jed to grab a double kill. Now, this is looking a little bit better here for we play. Yeah, they're still not answering the, the anti mage. He is very, very close to a very quick battle fury. But they get a three for one overall. They put a lot of damage into this tower. Killed off a, the Shaker level 5 at this point. Worth quite a bit, but now Credo, he's level 7. Gotta be a little bit careful here. Kev's gonna arrive. Raze get a kill. Who could have seen that one? Oh, Credo, please. No, not like this. Not like tower shots. Bro. Oh, they actually glimpsed back Jed. That's even better for Skyville. They're gonna grab the gyrocopter kill. This tower is not worth it, guys. It's it's really not. Now they're not even gonna get it since it should be denied by Grimto or someone. Is it gonna be denied? Maybe not. There it is. So, yeah, I actually just, like, don't have any clue what's going on in this game. No, Armel's just going to wander into an un unfortunate scenario. He's going to walk right out of that kinetic field, however. Fissure is going to slow him down, raises to follow. Still wind running, looking for a shackle angle. He's going to throw it, won't lash, gets glimpsed into a crush and will fall. Mm, is there a Roshan opportunity here? I don't think there is. A little bit too slow. So they do, I guess, take down the tower. Now going to join Torres up towards top lane. Still does not have anywhere towards his mechanism. Darkseer is not exactly super wealthy. Again, that's the uh, upside of having an anti the Darkseer. Very good at handling those ion shells. Can last time to the tower decently. Is going to get forced out of lane finally, but no mechanism means that. Skyville, if they want to, can actually force this issue and try to fight this. And they probably shouldn't. They're probably better off looking for some trades, but uh, I don't really know if those trades are going to happen either. Wind Ranger's back in. Rotations from the north. It's uh, the Bane. 
He's actually gonna straight up rush the lens. The lens on Bane is decent. More options with their fiend grip. The tower dies in the top lane in the meantime. And we play there. Pushing pretty aggressively right now. Again, this is the gameplay style that's meant to counter the anti-mage. And pretty much as prescribed, there's really no response lane-wise to the anti-mage. It's all in the gameplay style. Pushing his structures, limiting his space. Now Skyveil are going to have an opening to kill off cool devices. As long as they throw a fissure, there it is. They have a crush follow-up. There that is. And a couple right clicks and a raise. There's the Venture Spirit dead. Glimpse onto Torres. No, just put him in a field. Put him in a box. Forget about him. Kirito's going to arrive from the side. However, has a grip. Has to be careful about using it because of the fissure. They'll get a call down onto two. Kevs doesn't get Requiem out, but he's still going to fall. Yes, he will. Trades his life for the Gyrocopter. Armel's going to arrive now. Trying to go for the Disruptor. will grab the kill with the help of the Illusion. Now the grip onto Van is Armel's free to focus fire. That should be the kill on the Slaughter as well. Off in the corner. It looks like the Earthshaker was able to TP out of there. A 3-for-3 three three trade after all is said and done. But again, oh, a 3-for-2 rather. But that being said, Antimage is still farming up towards top. Wow, we did it, boys. We're setting records here. This is a very quick Battle Fury. Uh, I, I feel like nowadays, though, more and more Antimages are buying Power Treads first. I'm assuming you're giving me just straight Battle Fury Rush timings, but yeah, this is a lot of farm for this Antimage. And as nice as it is for the Radiant side to get okay trades, I mean, even good trades on the bottom lane, not having an answer to Antimage, not having Antimage die in the midst of that, is really setting them back. Like, the Gyrocopter has an okay amount of cash, I guess. He's not that far behind the Antimage, but his outright late game strength isn't nearly as high as the AMs. Windrange is getting closer to her Aghanim Scepter. In fact, she's on a pretty decent rate of farm. But again, as long as they're getting kills on everyone but Antimage, it's all pretty much just wasted. You need to kill this Antimage so badly, or take more structures and take better trades. Because that was a 5v4 in the end on the bottom lane. I didn't realize this Bane is 4, 1, and 5. Jeez. He has 6 CS and an Aether Lance. That's the dream. But Skyville Van, 2, 1, 2. He's got his Blink Dagger now up. So Blink Dagger on him. Shaker's Blink Dagger. Very close to completion. If he doesn't get picked off right now, maybe I jinxed it. Here's the grip. Call down's available. They don't even need it. Just Rocket Barrage and Power Shot. Won't quite grab the kill. Either way, still picking up the Shaker at, you know, maybe unknowing to the we play side at the perfect timing. 1800 gold now. Still, the Earth Shaker is farming very, very well for himself. So, not getting super fast Blink Dagger, but still fast enough to be a significant threat. Along with the Slaughter, will give Antimage so much more space. Now he has the power treads up. Now he's going to start to push the tower. And yeah, the rat from the Antimage at this point is pretty serious. Having Darkseer as the only hero to defend this isn't even super safe. Like with a glimpse into a static storm. With Antimage beating down. Oh, there it is. Glimpse. Static storm. Antimage beating down. <laughs> oh, I almost predicted that immediately. Look at that. Now Grimtoe is going to get called down upon. Second missile should not land. Antimage on his way out. They have vision right now, but no range for magic missile. Antimage is going to blink over and farm. That's some balls of steel play from Tim's. Armel's still kind of on the hunt, but now they can't find the AM. Yeah, you can't hold with just the Darkseer. Even if Darkseer had the mech there, I'm not convinced that he survives that. Tim's is level 2 mana break. Level 2 mana void. It's a lot of damage. It's a lot of damage. So they pick off the Darkseer, buy more space for the Antimage, buy more space now for the Shaker. And I guess to a lesser extent, buy more space for Van, but uh, we also have a Shadow Blade on the Shadow Fiend. Now this item, combined with the fact that they will have Blink Dagger and Slaughter, means that they can sneak into Roche and grab it pretty much with no hassle. They're going to start by dewarding just to make sure that their movements are not being spotted. But now Roshan is, you know, doors wide open for Skyville. It's not the safest thing in the world. You're up against Vacuum, you're up against Wall, but it's only level 8 Darkseer. Calldown is still a pretty significant threat, but it is something that they can work well enough around should they have the Earthshaker in the area with the Blink Dagger, which is, by the way, now purchasable. So I'm expecting that from Skyville. The risk may be a little bit too high. Like... Having the Antimage farm in the background is great, but it also means that Antimage is not going to be in that fight. Although, I guess he can join it if he has his Vlads. She'll have it very soon. Uh, it's still risky from Skyville, to say the least. Like, they don't really have to force that issue yet. There's still Tier 1 towers to take. Maybe the 
Radiant aren't going to defend them. But if they don't defend the towers, then Skyville are going to take that as a cue that Radiant don't want to fight. Then they're able to go into the Roche pit. So Skyville looking pretty decent in this game. And, well, the game is still fairly even. We play have been fighting a little bit better. Their aggression, this time not being super punished, but it just seems like they're trying to go aggressive on kind of the wrong heroes. Like, I don't know. Have there been any attempts at the anti-mage's life? I don't think there really have been. I mean, letting an anti-mage sit back and farm like that, it's asking for trouble. Especially a record-breaking anti-mage. That's what I'm talking about. Here we go. Back in, finally, the last pause of this match. Yeah, right. Now, there will be another peek here for the Wii Play side once their Windranger grabs a blink after Aghanim Scepter. And they'll have the mechanism by then on Darkseer. So their heroes still, you know, not they're not doing the greatest at handling this anti-mage, but they will eventually have much better answers. So we'll see if Armel is able to scrap together that gold. Pushing a tower seems a little bit risky, though, since Skyville are itching for a fight right now. Radiant's Static Storm tower. just cooling down. They have shiny new Blink Daggers to show off. I'm actually not even sure if Vanish showed off his Blink Dagger yet. Like, he was jungling before. So the Radiant side might not realize there's two Blinkers on the enemy side. They see cool devices. They see Jed immediately. Blink, crush, and fight damage. Field up. Echo Slam is there as well. Not enough follow-up damage, however. Jed's still alive. Finally, the right-click coming in. The focus on the Shaker is going to bring him down first. Jed now going to have time to call down. Gets swapped out so the crush doesn't kill him. He's just going to charge in looking for more. And they get the Nightmare onto Grim too. Kev's going to arrive. Brain Sap, Power Shot, though. Immediately disruptor down. Blink out from Ban. He's going to survive. But for Skyville, that was a lot of commitment. That was your Static Storm, your... Blink Dagger shown off, your Echo Slam being used, and they don't get the kill. Now, all those spells, they do quite a bit of damage, but if you have no one right-clicking with the Amplify damage, then Slaughter's job, like, do 200 physical damage, it's not a lot of damage. Oh, it's Kev's Requiem Rise Cool Device is not like this! Kaboom! There goes the Ventral Spirit! Lots of damage on everyone else as well, but he gets gripped immediately. The Fissure's not gonna drop him, the, Echo, the Enchant Totem will. Kirito Brain Sap, not gonna save him, it looks like. He's trying to race for the kill, it's not gonna happen. He'll Nightmare himself, in the meantime, it's Tim's to arrive onto Torres. He'll grab the Dark Seer kill, as well as the Bane. And that is gonna be a nice exchange here from Skyville. Shadow Fiend cutting things, potentially a little bit too close for comfort. But they grab the trade anyway, and it's a great one for Skyville after the kind of weird, weird one. So overall, it worked out pretty well for them, but they get the Blast delivered on the Anti-Mage, so a little bit of lifesteal for everyone. That should juice Kev's up to a very high amount of HP, and they're going to kill off Roche in the blink of an eye. The Shadow Blade into Mechanism build for Kev's. I'm not sure how much I like that. Mechanism is always good to have, but after Shadow Blade, I think you're already on a different route as a Shadow Fiend. Either way, he does have a double life. His mechanism is going to be completed very quickly, but no matter what the anti no matter what the Shadow Fiend does with his item build, as long as he kind of bulks up in some way, I think that's fine. I would have rather liked to see an SNY into like a Scotty type build. Just be super tanky as the Shadow Fiend, because you have a slaughter on your side. Your damage output's pretty much set with Amplify Damage. Plus, you have an anti mage, so you don't even have to be doing damage, even if you kind of want to. Sky will have this Aegis. They're not even going to push the anti mage, they don't really have to. Blink Echo Slam not up. They have the Disruptor ulti ready. Slaughter, of course, always ready. They'll walk in, grab a tower. Now they have pings out for the bottom lane. This is getting into critical mass territory for Skyville. Now they clearly don't have enough damage to burst down Jed. Armel does have his Aghanim Scepter completed. So it is still possible to see the Radiant side mount a significant defense. They don't still have a mechanism on Darkseer. So this is one of the latest mechanisms I've seen on the hero. Eventually it will be up, but man, Shadow Fiend's winning that race and then some. Mechanism already completed with the Shadow Blade. No big deal. It's an unfair comparison, I know, but you know, late Mechanism on Darks here. Not exactly going to help the aggressive playstyle that we play really want to get going. Smoke up. Ag at the ready. Whoever they find is pretty screwed if it's just one hero. Please tell me they have detection. Uh, they have a gem. Okay, well there's some detection right there. Now, the Shadow Fiend does have backup here. A lot of it. In fact, that backup is Blink Echo Slam. 
So Kevs, he may be spotted here. Waves into Van. They know he's there. Kevs, not spotted just yet because the gem's up toward the north. Van, you take a magic missile. Static Storm drops, which will force everyone from Skyville away. In the meantime, Torres is fighting Kevs in a 1v1 brawl. Armel's going to arrive. Van blinked out of there. However, Fissure is there, and it'll be Dark to fall first to Kevs. Now the Shadow Fiend going to re-arrive. Grim 2 stuck in the corner, but everybody uses Static Storm. He's already done his job. They'll lose the Shadow Fiend's Aegis. Van, in the meantime, taking a snooze, is getting woken up by a Brain Sap, and will fall as well. Now Kevs on the run. Shackled to a tree, will lose his life as well. A two for one trade in a uh, three for one, I guess, if you count the ages in favor of we play smoke gang successful. Tim's still farming in the background, he's gonna have a chance to actually man fight Jed. Not really sure if Gyrocopter wants to be doing this. Another TP coming in, he'll be just fine. Uh, no way to catch up this anti mage. Yeah, but Skyville looks like the shaker bailed out first thing. He blinked down to the south, so he didn't have blink to echo slam in. Not really sure if there was a great a chance for that anyway. And the Bane showing off just how much this hero can do. Especially in those super scrappy engagements when there's not many interrupts being thrown out. Getting a nightmare onto one, taking that hero out of the fight for like, what, yeah, seven seconds? Pretty easy going there. Losing your Dark Seer is whatever, he already has his mechanism. Hmm. Yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird, uh, selection to have of items. They pull in two different directions. Shadow Blade is the I'm gonna kill heroes type item. And the mechanism is I'm going to kill towers type item. Usually it's one or the other and then S and Y I want to say. That's the most common build. Well maybe not like of all time. That one might be like Blink Dagger or Yule Scepter or something like that. Maybe. Who knows. By the way, it is still the we play side to have a pretty decent trade. They take down the Aegis. They handle the Shadow Fiend very well. But that was, for the most part, a Shadow Fiend, like, he had backup there as far as the heroes are concerned, but the backup wasn't really there. The heroes didn't really give him that much support. Skyville, they still have decent control of this game because their anti-mage is still happily farming away until he gets shackled. Focus fire, a lot of damage, not quite enough. Mm, unfortunately, the Bane is just a little bit too far away. Now Van gonna return in with Tim's half, half HP, Blink Crush onto Armel, Field should go up, an Echo Slam actually, gonna crush him, Field and Static Storm, catch onto three, the mechanism is gonna keep them from dying immediately, Tim's though, has a Mana Void, can't even cast it in time, Jed may get the kill on the, the Earth Shaker here, not a big deal, that would have been like a triple kill for Antimate, I think if he casts his ultimate, now he's gonna pop Manta Style, gonna shave for Karito, the Brain Zap is there, but it doesn't matter, Tim's gonna grab the kill, Gem now on the deck, and they're going for Jed, another Blink Board into a Crush, Gyrocopter has Rocket Barrage, but it's not enough, He'll lose his life with a triple kill for Tim's, a two for five exchange. They get the gem in the end. Do they? Where the hell did the gem go? Uh, I'm not really sure where the gem went. Did the Radiant? Oh, the Radiant snuck in their courier and grabbed the gem. Very sneaky, but yeah, you secure the gem, I guess. That's nice up against the Shadow Blade, but you give three kills over to the Anti-Mage. You have a lot of items coming up in the rest of the surviving Skyville heroes. You only take down the supports. Anti-Mage at this point is battle ready, like he's almost level 18, old enough to drink, old enough to smoke, soon, soon old enough to drink in the US, I know guys, I know, but clearly he doesn't really have to worry about that much, like he's not going to get instigated by the Wind Ranger right now, she doesn't even have a Blink Dagger, in fact doesn't look like she's going for one, so Tim's is going to get into full Anti-Mage state of the game, and Jed put up a decent fight to be fair, but Gyrocopter needs help, a lot of it. If he's going to do that well. At the very least needs Ventral Spirit to survive for the aura. Or a good vacuum wall. Or a grip. Like, you don't even need all of them. You just need a couple of those things. But none of those are really happening right now. They're going to smoke up. Look towards top lane. Anti-Mage is not in the area. There is no Echo Slam here. But Kevs does have a DD rune. That means they're going to have to grip him. And hope that grip is going to stick. Everyone from Skyville, though, they see this coming from a mile away. This is going to be really hard for the Wii Play side to initiate into. Karito now spotted. Smoke blown. Fissure is going to be thrown onto three. They're all spotted because of the wave. The stomp will miss. Kev's now going to wind up a Requiem. We'll do some okay damage to everyone. We'll drive him away most of it. Now here comes Jed from the side. With Glimpse down. Call down though. Still doing a lot of damage to Grim too. What the hell is going on? Tim's going to finally arrive. They get the Shack Shot onto Kev. Stack Storm is there though. So Armel cannot win run afterwards. Is going to lose his life to the Anti-Mage. In the meantime, Slaughter still surviving. Anti-Mage is going to grab two kills in the end. Now looking for a third. Can't quite find it. But in the meantime, Van and Natsu, they're going to grab the Bane. And they'll glimpse back Jed. The Mana Void is now up. Short glimpse back. Tim's with the right clicks. Jed now completely out of mana. And a slaughter on his ass is going to get put into a corner and dropped another triple kill for Tim's. This Anti-Mage is freaking huge, man. He is 
going for another perseverance. Um, sure. I mean, not really sure what that's gonna be. Another battle fury, a Lincoln sphere, uh, a Lotus orb. Sure, a Lincoln sphere. I mean, it is a decent item to have up against the Bane at the very least. I do feel like he could probably get away with a BKB in this game. But either way, Tim's is 8 0 and 3. No one has really tried to stop him. No one really can stop him at this point. And Skyville, pay with their Shadow Fiend. All of that shenanigans in the tree line, whatever. All just to attempt to buy space for the anti to teleport in. And man, did it work well. So Skyville, they lose their Shadow Fiend, but they, what they get in exchange, all those kills, the tower as well, more farm space for Tim's in the meantime. Plus a completed Lincoln Sphere once Antimage's Courier gets out. Skyvilla are in complete control of this game. This is an Antimage game through and through, and for the Radiant side, their gameplay style as far as countering the Antimage is not really coming into full effect. Like The Tier 2 towers are still up, and the top lane Tier 2 of course means that the jungle is free for the Antimage. The bottom two towers, or I guess the bottom and mid tower means that the Roshan and Ancient camps are available for the AM. Speaking of which, it's going to be a 3 stack for the Antimage to kill very soon. A lot more extra gold here for the Anti-Mage. Doesn't even need buyback. He can probably get a Butterfly next. I don't see the Wind Ranger or Gyrocopter being able to buy a MKB anytime soon. There's no Rod of Atos either, so there's really no uh, any sort of response to the Anti-Mage's evasion should he grab a Butterfly next item. But if it's not that, it's going to be Roche. And Roche is going to be almost a free claim there from Skyville. Minute 30 till it responds. They could wait. They could probably take down the bottom tier tower in the meantime, actually, instead of waiting. Screw waiting. Go kill things. Tim's, again, is not going to be joining his team. Split push for the anti mage. This is bold from Skyville, to say the least. They do have Echo Slam. They do have all their ultimates up. But Shadow Fiend doesn't have a BKB. If you had BKB, go for this as a four man squad. And you can. It's still risky, but it's at least a little bit safer. Since your Shadow Fiend is only susceptible to grip at that point. Without it, it's kind of risky. Now the smoke up. Tim's, if he gets caught right now, he has Lincoln Sphere to protect him, and that's it. Manta Styles there as well is going to Lincoln's Manta, and then blink out of there. And look at these illusions just go to town. The smoke is going to be wasted this time. Anti Mage is not easy to kill, and bottom lane tower will be destroyed in the meantime. Roshan still not up. Skyville going to shove the wave a little bit further just to force some heroes back. But going in without their Anti Mage there is just suicidal. Why do that when you can grab a double life, right? Just 30 seconds left to wait. Not going to line up perfectly, perfectly. But still, the Roshan is going to be cleared almost for sure by Skyville. And the split push from the Anti-Mage is also insane. Jeez. This, uh, yeah, this is a pretty big Anti-Mage. Getting two consecutive triple kills is pretty good as far as uh, assisting your farm. 3,300 golds. Yeah, I feel like it's just... Oh, Basher, actually. Hmm. Not really sure how much I like the Basher. I feel like offensively, this Anti Mage is fine. And Butterfly is like, you know, it is also an offensive item, but also has like defensive purposes up against the Wind Ranger and Gyrocopter. I think I would have been fine with a Butterfly on the Anti Mage. Probably as like number one. I was gonna say some other item, but I don't remember what it is now. Hell, you can also just like get Moon Shards, I think. Uh, or MKB, like for the Wind Ranger, that's what I was going to say. MKB so that you can just hit the Wind Ranger all the time. I feel like Abyssal this game is okay, but not amazing. Like, Abyssal on Anti-Mage is never going to be bad, but... Uh, what do you... To have an Abyssal really be good, you want to be going up against a Blinker. Like a Queen of Pain or something. Then Abyssal's insane, and much better than MKB, but... Whatever, what's done is done, man. He's got the Basher. He has so much gold, he could probably sell the Basher and buy an MKB if he really wanted to. <laughs> Just show off how much bling he has. They grab the Aegis. That is second Roshan, I believe. They have BKB1 on the Shadow Fiend, BKB2 on the Slaughter. Almost complete. But for right now, it's time to look towards that high ground. Anti-Mage is not quite at his peak, but he's so much stronger than anyone else on the Radiant side. Like, Gyrocopter is pretty big as well, I guess, but it's not really a comparison. As long as Tim's doesn't get hit with a full-length grip, I think Skyville should be fine in this fight. I say as he gets a little bit close to the pain. He's gonna have to watch out, be quick on his band style. Lincoln Sphere pop now, so backing up. And Kev's is gonna be that siege engine. Time to go for the tower. Top lane still being pushed by the gyrocopter right now. They're going to look for a grip. Backing back out of three. Grip onto Nanatsu. 
They are going to interrupt it though with Van. Tim's going to jump in on Kurito. Requiem flies out and that's going to kill off the Bane immediately. Jed's going to arrive with the BKB. Callout is there. Fly can do some decent damage, but now he's up against the Shadow Fiend and the Anti Mage both amped up. Anti Mage is going to jump in, get a first hit, bash Armel. He doesn't have Wind Run right now. There is still a Mana Void. I'm not sure if that's enough damage, but it's going to be close. Uh, they're going to slip away with the Wind Mage, but they glimpse back Torres instead. They'll lose the Aegis onto Kev's, or will they actually? Yes, they will with the Power Shot through, but it's a small price to pay. They get a three for zero trade. Everyone else in Skyville kind of banged up, but Tim's still literally at full HP. He's going to kill off the tower and take down the Raxes. And it looks like we might be having an early match, guys. Two very short games for Skyville. Cool devices scouting out. <laughs> Realizing that the threat is right in front of her. Anti-Mage with 46, 4900 gold now. And going for more. No gyrocopter means no defense. They have a chance to kill off with the Anti-Mage with a focus fire. Could Anti-Mage go into the tower or something? The, the tier 4 is or the fountain? But Tim's is not going to die to that. He's going to get nightmared. Who cares? Gets pulled off immediately. Takes a magic missile, takes a brain sap. Still doesn't really notice. Shackle shot, focus fire, not really doing any. Did he miss focus fire? I think he actually used it on something else. Uh, it didn't do anything, that's for damn sure. And Sky will get another tower on top of the Abyssal Blade completion. Anti Mage is another 1800 gold. There is just so much dough rolling in here for Skyville. 3500 on the SF, 3000 on the Earthshaker. BKB now completed. Whew, top five. Tim's 1103. Like, when you have a score like that, the Anti-Mage farm kind of runs itself. But, uh, yeah, this Anti-Mage is pretty darn big. Now it's time for him to... Is it is it Moonshard time? Like, he's pretty much 6-slotted already. I guess you kind of don't want Vlad's in your final itemization, but it's still doing a lot of work for him right now. So, yeah, get Moonshards, man. Gotta keep up with that farm. Gotta keep up with that top 5 farm. You have everyone's expectations on you. This is, by the way, guys, what happens. Oh, Jed's going to get abyssaled and annihilated. Oh, he's going to block the mana void, the MK, uh, BKB. Anti-Mage only getting one bash there, I think. That was kind of unlucky. That's what happens when you get a Lincoln Sphere and not a Butterfly. You can't solo kill the enemy gyrocopter. Feels bad, man. And he still forces out, like, an 8-second, a 9-second BKB charge. So that's still really, really good for Tim's. He committed, like, absolutely nothing there. And he's still got a BKB charge out of it. Plus, everyone else on his team is loaded. The Shadow Fiend is like the hidden second carry. The Shadow Fiend can very easily get an MKB, although I still like Scotty here. Just bulk up as Shadow Fiend. You don't have to do damage. Butterfly? I'm sure. Butterfly is never a bad item on these agility heroes. Maybe only a bad item on Nyx Assassin, right? <laughs> This could be the first time, no matter how far ahead you are, it's never too late to 322. All he has to do is dive in and get gripped. Easy. All Kurito has to do is just grip the Anti-Mage and hope to God that Earthshaker and Slaughter are drunk at the wheel. They're going to enfeeble him. I don't think he notices. Crush gonna miss, swap back on a van, he'll force staff out of there, pop the BKB, now cool devices with the Amplify Dam taking so much of it, Tim's is gonna blink in, straight into a Fiend's grip, no one's interrupting it just now, they get back you back into a wall, Tim's will die actually, they lose the Shaker as well, and the Disruptor, as Wind Ranger's gonna draw a double kill, van now gonna blink out of there, Missile is still on his tail, is he trapped? Uh, they know where he is, they're gonna go for Kev's instead however, looks like Wind Ranger right on the Shadow Fiend's tail, yeah, it doesn't have any true sight, so that's not going to happen. But I had to say it, didn't I? I had to say it. The only... Th oh, Disruptor kills off Bane somehow. Okay, the creeps do it, actually. Disruptor gets credit. Um, the only way that Skyville lose these fights is if Antimage blinks into a crypt and everyone is unable to help him. And that is exactly what happened. So, yeah. Um, Skyville killed off the Ventral Spirit really quickly. That's nice, I guess. But you gotta protect your anti-mage. He does not have a heart. He is still not easy to kill, but killable from the Radiant side. Especially with Fiend's Grip and Focus Fire. Like, that's a lot of damage. See, anti-mage, if you had a butterfly there, you'd probably be able to survive the Focus Fire. Because Wind Ranger is nowhere close to an MKB. Maybe she would be building an MKB instead of a Desolator if there was a butterfly on the anti-mage, but mm, it still wouldn't be up yet.
So that's why you need survivability on an anti-mage build. Can't lean on a Lincoln Sphere all day. He has two ultimate orbs in his inventory. That's not terrible. But he needs backup now. Can't do it all by himself. He's going to buy out Travels. Another 1,000 gold in the bank. And still Skyville. Yeah, that was a rough fight. But still, they're in complete control of this game. Echo Slam will be up soon. Ooh, Soul Booster into Octarine, probably. Bane, get the hell out of my way. I'm looking at Octarine Core. Yeah, the, the lifesteal is nice and everything. You really are looking for that health pool. Probably more so than anything else. The cooldown also is you know, extremely good. I'm not going to say it's not good. But man, at the very least now, Earthshaker has 1800 HP. Not an easy hero to kill off. Windmage is doing a lot of damage, for sure. But if you take like an extra couple of seconds trying to kill off an Earthshaker, then those are extra seconds where you're getting beaten down by a Shadow Fiend. Or you're not attacking the Shadow Fiend and you're not attacking the Slardar. Shaker just bulking up has a lot of value for Skyville. Now they are spotted right now. Invisible Earthshaker. Not going to get swapped back just yet. There it is. They're also going to jump in to vacuum the Disruptor. It's also not going to be followed up upon. However, Glimpse is going to prevent the Windmage from following up on a Shackle Shot. Anti-Mage down to position. Looking for a crush. Going to land onto two. Armel's going to jump immediately into the grinder he goes. He's going to get beaten down by the Anti-Mage. Tim's going to take a little bit of damage. Now he's going to get... Gripped up. Someone has to interrupt this van looking for a bash. Is not going to find it, but the crush will interrupt the grip finally. Now Kevs is just going to town. Double kill for him. They have Jet in their sights. Blink for it again by Tims with the mana void. It's going to be two double kills. Good game is called, but it's not over yet because Cool Devices still has to die and he will do so. Triple kill again for Tims. And that is going to be that 22 to 38. And Skyville are going to 2 0 Weeply, knocking them out. That is going to be a nice clean series for Skyville. That was, uh, again, we play. I mean, the, the Darkster's lack of farm definitely not helping them out a ton. Their aggressive play with the Bane was pretty good, but outside of that, all their aggression going on to the wrong heroes. Gotta kill off the Santa Mage, otherwise, a score 14, 1, and 3. He will kick your ass, and he will kick it very hard. Guys, it's gonna be it for this series. There is another series coming up in an hour, I wanna say, since this was a 2 0. Yes, it's in an hour. It's going to be Mineski versus Skyville. So, yeah, this is just the warm-up game for Skyville because it's going to only get harder from here. If they win that, okay, this is the order. This is how hard this gauntlet is for Skyville, or for anyone, really. Versus Mineski next. Winner of that versus Execration versus that versus TNC. So, good freaking luck to whoever is going to be winning those games. It's going to be hard. But, guys, I'm Mike Lore. It's been a pleasure casting this game for you. I've got Corrupt Drop Bear providing the statistics. And I'll be right back in another hour for the second match of the day. Skyville going up against Mineski.